Some motherfuckers just don't know. I mean, can you fault them? Can you blame them? Are they liable? Is it something they should have known? Who should have told them? Their parents? Their mom and dad? Their manager? Their friends? Their peers? Those associates they're closest to? The associates they run with couldn't keep them in line? And what? They expect you to cut them a break? Plausible deniability isn't worth shit. If you don't know, you don't know. And if you know, you know. It's Wednesday, February 10th. This is Alex, another installment of the Corporate Cowboys podcast on plausible deniability. Powered by Incorporating Associates. Visit us at associatesincorporatingassociates.org. Cop yourself an insignia pin. More products coming soon in the future. Visit us on Instagram. Drop us a follow, a like. Share the corporate love. That's at incorporating.associates underscore IA. If you don't know, what are you worried about? But if you have the opportunity to learn, if you have the opportunity to know, and you refuse to learn it, see, I used to work with a motherfucker like that. When I was younger, I worked in a in a business hotel. I thought it was a swell job. I was at the front desk. I started at the front desk. Checking in folks, taking reservations, making accommodations, servicing world world business travelers. Had a lot of international folk slide through and stay with us. My goal, my mission was to make their stay as productive as possible, as, as seamless, given the difference in culture, the difference in business practice, the difference in ethics, morals even. I worked with a, an employee. I worked, yeah, I worked with an employee, a coworker there, who when it was time to turn over the shift to them, at the close of the night, because I worked on the um, on the PM shift, we'll say like on the afternoon shift. Granted, when you work in, in in a business hotel and business never sleeps, you'll have folks arriving at all hours of the day, whenever their flights come in. But the policy at this hotel was to have all the rooms cleaned, ready, and prepared to check folks in in the afternoon shift, in the evening shift, the PM shift, if you will. At the end of my shift, I was supposed to uh, reconcile all of my transactions for the day, make notes of any special circumstances any happenings, any events, not just in the hotel with certain groups, certain parties, certain guests, as well as the area, the city in which we were in, the region, in case our business folk need a recommendation to get away and experience the area. After all, they are still tourists. They are still human. Hard at work, Monday through Friday, depending on how long they stayed with us, a week at a time, a month at a time. There were some that were there for a year and change. So years at a time while I was there. And this employee I worked with, total piece of shit. They wanted plausible deniability even when it didn't benefit them. Why? Just being lazy. Just being inconsiderate. Being incompetent. 
When it came time to turn the shift over to them at the end of the night, and I, and it was my turn to let them know. Just as I had came on shift earlier in the day, and the shift was turned over to me by whoever was working, whomever was working that morning, and they had let me know what's happening in the hotel, what our guests are getting up to, what events to be on the lookout, sightings, whatnot. I'd take it all in stride. I'd note what I'd need to. I would note down what I need to. And incorporate that into my shift. I never wanted to get caught off guard, unprepared. I couldn't be vulnerable, especially in the evening. In the evening, I was manager on duty. I was the only one in the hotel. Yeah, pretty much the only one in the hotel. So to give you some to give you an idea, the hotel had about 80 rooms, 80 rooms, and we try to keep it to capacity so as to not have any rooms go vacant for the night. Obviously, the goal was to sell out for the evening and leave no vacancies, sell every room. We wanted heads and beds. So in addition to checking folks in, I would be making those accommodations. Anybody who called and asked for a rate as manager on duty, I could negotiate their rate. I could bring it down if I had to. Certain privileges, certain liberties were extended to me. I had the power to evict guests, evict house guests. It never came to that, though, as a professional, as an interactionalist, as a communicator. I put my social skills to the I put my social skills to work there. I became an effective communicator interpersonally. And these were already skills that had brought to me before. And I felt that they would pay off immensely. And they did. And checking in guests, I would ask them how their day was, obviously, make a little bit of small talk. And as I took down their information in order to get them checked in, what organization they worked for, what they were doing, I'd ask them, I'd begin to ask them about certain aspects of their job. If they were in the technology industry, I'd ask them a question that I'd have simmering in my head about solid state drives or some some shit like that. I've got a bunch of random knowledge now floating around in my head. Some I will use and some I may never. Others, doctors came in, pharmacists came in. Not pharmacists who work in a pharmacy. I mean pharmacists who are licensed to set up pharmacies and distribute to them. A little higher up on the ladder. And I'd ask them how their industry works. Truckers. Truckers who manage truckers. They'd come in and stay. Folks who are out on corporate uh, corporate vacation or staying for an extended period, I'd want to get to know them, what their industry is like. What's the delineation between product, retail, and service? Just get an idea, get a feel for the setting in which their organization conducts business. Obviously, I wasn't as ominous sounding as I am now. It's happy-go-lucky. Alex, always smiling. I'm sure if you look me up now, my name still rings bells on fucking Travelocity and Expedia. (laughs) Absolutely. 
I was a man of business. I was a man of service, a consummate professional. Pride myself on that. If there's anything to have pride for, can't be you can't be vain, right? But you could have some pride. You could have pride on a job well done, especially if your name is attached to it. You want to be gracious. So this employee, when it came time to turn the shift over to them, would ask me to stop relaying information to them. Literally. Literally. I would start with letting them know how the shift went. All they wanted to know was, is it a quiet night or is it a busy night? Can I expect anything crazy? All they wanted was yes or no's. And obviously, everything is circumstantial. Everything is contextual. I can't tell them that we're not going to have a crazy night. I hope that motherfucker has a crazy night. (laughs) He ended up getting fired. So he won't be having any crazy nights at the hotel. Unless he's renting a room and decides to trash it himself. And it doesn't just go for for males. It goes for females, too. I work with a bitch who was afraid to answer phones at a hotel. <laughs> yeah. Took it upon herself to, to sort out who answers the phone. If they answered it one time, they expected you to answer it next time, even if you were busy. Why? Because, quote unquote, I answered it last time. Fuck out of here. Stupid bitch. Why you get into a service industry job in the first place? Hates talking on the phone. Probably sounds fake as fuck on the phone anyways. But what would I know? Plenty of people are two-faced like that. Plenty of people. But plausible deniability only gets you so far. This motherfucker could say, oh, well, I didn't know. The, fo- you know, the following day, whenever they were getting written up or some disciplinary action was getting taken on them. They could say, oh, I didn't know. Alex didn't tell me. Alex didn't pass that down. I, I didn't know. I wasn't aware of it. And of course, he's going to fucking throw me under the bus. So what can I say? Tell him you told him. Tell him you told him. Next time they tell you to stop, wish them good luck. I'm not saying to go report or to go inform. At the time, because I was still relatively new, but I was making waves, making a little splash making my name. They really thought they had pull. They thought they had pull because they were one of the longest tenured employees at the hotel. So they thought they held some sway. Now, this isn't a a large a large hotel part of a international chain. No. It was just up and down the one coast. And management was pretty independent of corporate, except that management still like to cuck out to corporate sometimes. That's another story for another time. I'm not going to fill this fucking podcast with complaints and my whining. <laughs> it's all funny, though. I'm, I never had a bad day at work, even when I was meant to have a bad day. All smiles, all laughs. I know I got the thing, an arm's reach away from me at all times. Figuratively, metaphorically, plausible deniability. That's what this podcast is, right? I can't tell you I got the thing ready, oiled down with an extended magazine sticking out of it. 
at an arm's length away. Now, can I? Would you believe me? Fucking plausible deniability. Did you know Alex was armed to the teeth? No. He sounds so nice. Ominous, but he sounds so nice. Plausible deniability can get you killed. Especially if you especially if you claim you didn't know, but you're the only person who could know. When they got your bitch ass cornered. When you're the only piece left that's unaccounted for and you claim you don't know, motherfucker, you better know what the deal is. Motherfucker, you should have known. And they're not even going to say that. I won't say that. I won't say you should have known. You should have thought of that beforehand. I'll just say, okay, good luck and send you off. (laughs) What am I going to do? Report you? Inform on you? To who? If you didn't know. (laughs) Good luck. Plausible deniability. You better know. And that goes to the very, very beginning of this little excerpt. Who should have told you? Your parents, your mom and dad. And it's not just about organizational moves. It's about personal moves. There's things, there's shit you could ask Google. You could duck, duck, go. If your parents never told you how to tie your shoes, how to wash dishes, how to mop floors, how to wipe tables, Small service things. You might think they're menial, but someone has to do them. And when you grow conscious, when you grow conscious of the service that goes into everyday work, everything else is easy. Everything else is a piece of cake. It's just service. Sure, I'd rather just have to use my mouth, my mouthpiece, verbalize Orders, verbalize work, create a product with just words. But I'm cognizant of the fact that physical labor goes into everything. Somebody has to squeeze the trigger. Somebody has to use the knife. Somebody's digging the hole. All that shit takes work. <laughs> All that shit takes work. Yeah, you can talk the person into the hole, right? Using your mouthpiece. But you still have to dig the fucking hole. That's if you're not quartering and dissolving motherfuckers. But that's another topic. I've had to train 18-year-olds. Fucking kids who don't know how to cook. Kids who don't know how to wipe tables down. Are you serious? I might make a whole episode on just how to do random fucking chores. Random chores. I've been a manager before. Manager in a, in a restaurant. Having to train fucking 50, 60 year olds on how to greet guests. How to greet customers. How to use their fucking mouthpiece. These old motherfuckers have no social skills either. Don't think you're exempt. What, your fucking mama never told you how to say hi? How to... How to fucking greet somebody? How to be courteous? It's fucking ridiculous. I don't know how they make it through life without... Catching a stray bullet. Not even stray... I'm just aiming it in your direction and saying, good luck. You should have known. You want to send a donation? Do that. PayPal.me slash Corporate Cowboys. Venmo at Alex underscore Coco. And Cash App, dollar sign, Corporate Cowboys. Have yourself a great week.